Hi everybody, this is a quick tutorial on Square Retrofit library, uh, specifically with focus on Android. So what is Retrofit? Retrofit is a type C REST client. It is uh, provided by Square, which uh, the company that makes uh, credit card readers for point of sales terminals. Um, that work with Apple devices, I think like iPads. Uh, the retrofit library makes your life easier by providing you ability to communicate with the web server and get back the data from it in a nice formatted Java objects. The library relies heavily on construct called Java annotations that you have seen before if you're working on Android in uh, annotations like at override. Uh, in this case, the annotations are like at get, for example, here in this example, at path here in this example. Uh, annotations are uh, a way to provide syntactic metadata to your Java source code. Uh, could be classes, method level, parameter levels, even variables and package levels, all right? So we'll, we'll kind of zoom in on what Retrofit can do for you. Say, for example, you have an Android app that communicate with a server, in this example, open weather uh, server. You would typically do a GET request with uh, the endpoint, which is api.openweathermap.org and provide it uh, clearly the URL, relative URL, and a query. In this case, Q is, Q is equal to city state. And once you send a well-formatted uh, request to the open weather, it will send you back a JSON formatted response uh, like that. So to implement this in your Android app, it's fairly simple, you got to put a retrofit library and that retrofit library will provide your app the APIs and also you can use any HTTP libraries to communicate with the server request and response and then use several available parsers to, <clears throat> to parse your response back say for example JSON to parse your JSON formatted response so we'll get back to uh, how it works. I think this is fairly straightforward. The yellow portions is what the rest, rest uh, retrofit library provides you. It has request methods. These work at a method level, which are get, post, put, delete. They are relative URL of the response. Uh, so if you have a URL string, you got the endpoint, which is www.openweatherapi.com and relative URL will be data after that. And then you can manipulate the URL by using things like at path, at query. In this specific example, we'll use a get request and a query. Right. Before you start, a couple of things. First, uh, make sure your Android manifest file has an internet permission. Uh, and then include the libraries. In Android Studio, you do that on build.gradle by including retrofit library and the JSON library. The very first step will be to declare your interface. So interface specification is really simple. It's a public interface. I call this get weather API. The first, there are two uh, interface APIs in this. First one is a asynchronous, which is void. It returns void and uh, takes in a city name and a callback method. So that callback method will be called when the result is available. Second is a synchronous call, and you make that blocking call and it will return you the weather data object. Here is a at get annotation that specifies a relative URL. And here is a query that helps you manipulate the URL and it will encode the URL for you. So what it will do is combination of these two will make it whether question mark Q is equal to city slash comma country name. So that's what this is gonna do. Two methods here, asynchronous and synchronous. Uh, 
to use synchronous on Java, uh, oh, sorry, on Android, you would need to spawn a separate thread for this as you will get a crash otherwise because you can't do these calls from the UI thread. So that's step one, create your APIs. Second is you got to create a REST adapter. REST adapter, you build it from the library that the library provides you and to the builder, once you get the builder to the library, you can pass your configuration items. Say for example, setting your log logging level to fullest or if what your endpoint is, you can set what HTTP library to use. For example, okay, HTTP. You can also specify the JSON converters that you want to specify here. Error handling, pretty sophisticated ways to construct this adapter. Once you build this adapter, you can create an API to access it. Creating is, uh, creating is very simple. Look at this adapter.create and give it what your class is and it'll create that for you. So now using this adapter, you can access your APIs. Now for the sake of convenience, I encapsulate these two APIs within this adapter. So you do not have to worry about the specific API object that you're in it. So your caller can just call you, call your test weather API, for example, with a city, city slash country and your callback method where you want to receive the results. And similarly for the synchron, synchronous portion of it. The last portion of it, declare your JSON object. And we're using, since we're using JSON, your class uh, member names should be same as whatever you're gonna get back from the JSON object, all right? And to wrap it all around, I consider a test weather data object. Here, clearly you got to make the ad REST adapter first. And once you have the REST adapter, you can make appropriate call. Uh, for the async call, you need to provide a callback. Here's a retrofit callback which essentially is two override methods. One is success and failure. Success will be called in case of your successful weather data object and failure when you got some sort of error. And then the synchronous call here, again, you create an adapter if it doesn't exist. And then you create a new thread and from within that thread, you can call your synchronous call here. And that's it. I think it's fairly simple uh, and it works great. I have kept this example code on uh, uh, GitHub. So if you like uh, for Android Studio, download it and try it out. And uh, give me some feedback if it doesn't work out for you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session. It was quick, simple, and small. Thank you.